Welcome back to the Fry Smiles Oral Health Network. I'm your host, Scott Fry, and we are right in the middle of our series on coffee and staining. And I'm salivating a little bit. This is, I have some delicious coffee once again. This is going to be my, my favorite series of posts of all time here with coffee. Maybe we can do something on some wine or something like that, maybe. That would be pretty good, too. Um, so what we're talking about today, we talked last week about polyphenols and how they contribute to staining. Uh, they're the stain causing compounds that are in coffee and a lot of other things as well. And this week we're going to be talking about how uh, you can change the way you brew coffee so that way there's less stain compounds in the coffee. So the big factors when you're brewing hot coffee are the ratio of the grinds to the water. So the more coffee grinds you put in in comparison to the water, obviously you're going to have more stain causing compounds um, and it's not really so much how you brew the coffee it's actually you know what these recommended ratios are for specific types of brews that you know cause more staining with one brew over another and then close second to that is actually the size of the grind itself so the finer the grind the more stain compounds are going to end up in your cup of coffee but if you're going ahead and brewing what's, uh, you know, what are those, I think it's toddies, it's that cold brew coffee, that's actually going to have the lowest possible stain of anything out there just because the temperature is so low uh, and the grinds are actually really, really coarse. So you'll have something like, you know, they, they say that there's, I think it's 67% less acids than regular coffee and it's uh, maybe a third of the caffeine. But uh, that means that you're going to have a dramatically reduced ability for that coffee to stain your teeth as well. Um, you know, it, people think that sometimes I guess the uh, the filters have a uh, you know play a role in this, but that's really what that's doing is taking out the coffee oils. So that crema you get on top of like the espresso or something like a French press, which doesn't have a filter, um, those are the the fatty oils in the coffee, and it's not really the stain causing compounds. Um, so if you want to go ahead and you're concerned about stains uh, in, in, your, in your coffee habit, I've got two recommendations for you. You can either go with something like uh, espresso because even though there's going to be more concentration per fluid ounce of stain compounds, you're going to end up drinking less of it just because the formulations, the small cup of, es of espresso, the latte, doesn't have the same volume of coffee that you would get in something like one of those pour overs or French press um, cups of coffee. Or you can go ahead and go in the exact opposite direction and get something like uh, the Toddy's uh, coffee maker and do cold brew coffee which is going to give you the absolute lowest amount per fluid ounce of stain compounds that you can possibly you know find out there. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and post down below uh, our whole, I have a table here um, with a whole bunch of different brewing methods uh, from Turkish coffee um, through the percolator and all those in the French press and everything like that and I have some recommended uh, coffee to water ratios I got them from Intelligentsia and um, I think it was the uh, the Illy website I went on there and picked uh, their particular ratios off for the for the data that I've included in this table and I know you have some leeway when you're making coffee at home if you want to go ahead and put in more beans or less beans that's going to have a big impact on the staining compounds as well and this is just based on what the the standard accepted uh, ratios are brewing times uh, and brewing temperatures this is going to be just a ranking of what's going to have the highest concentration of staining compounds but, you know, I want to thank uh, everybody who went ahead and, and became Facebook fans of our More Than Smiles movement uh, on Facebook. I want you guys to go on, if you get a chance, go ahead and show your support and join the movement uh, on More Than Smiles, uh, our Facebook page, um, and help us reinvent the way that, you know, people approach oral health. And I'll see you guys next week. I hope you enjoyed the post. Take care.